This fan base is amazing. The city of Cincinnati is amazing, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Desmond takes a handoff run to the right. He's got all sorts of room to the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Howdy, folks. Welcome back to Viva La Cats, the Cincinnati branch of the 1012 Network. I am your host, Justin Hiles. My friend Steve is not here today, but I am joined by today's guest of Raspy Voice Kids, Brandon Phoenix. This is going to be an interesting one with the Big 12 Truck Stop Trail, our second stop so far through the new teams that we are becoming familiar with of the Big 12 Conference. We host Bearcats episodes every single week and do post-game Twitter space live reviews uh, based on general reactions. So if this is your first time, thanks for joining us. If you're returning, thanks for coming back around and enjoy this one. Hello, everybody. This is this week's edition of the Big 12 Truck Stop Trail. We are the Truck Stop Conference, uh, depending on who you're talking to. And we're just going to own it now at this point. Uh, And, you know, Pac-12, well, that is what it is. This week, we've got Raspy Voice Kids. We have Brandon Phoenix of RBK. Uh, awesome, awesome podcast out of West Virginia. These guys bring the energy. They talk Mountaineers. They talk pop culture. So they've got you covered for everything under the sun. Uh, so make sure to check them out. And they're also a member of our 1012 network. So without further ado, Brandon, introduce yourself. My name is Brandon Phoenix, a.k.a. I also hate Pitt. Because no matter what you know about <laughs> me and my brother, you need to know I also hate Pitt. Don't hate the Bearcats, not yet. Tony Pike, <laughs> notwithstanding. Shout out to Viva La Cast. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here tonight. We're glad to have you on, man. Like I said, these guys bring the energy, so there's always going to be uh, it, there's always something to listen to with them. It's it's definitely a fun time. Um, two quick notes to start us off. So uh, we've already got your handle, I guess. So that's covered. So if you ha- didn't catch that, it is I. It's I'm trying to remember. I ace. I also hate Pit. Right. Correct. Straight out the gate. All right, cool. And then, so tell us, like, what is your tie specifically to West Virginia? So I, we grew up in West Virginia, born and raised in West Virginia, the great state, the mountain state. We are Mountaineers. Season tickets forever. We were there for the first game we went to, 1993 Miami, first time beating the Hurricanes, undefeated season. You know, Jake Kelsner, Darren Studstill, Robert Walker, Real Mountaineers know about that game. That was the game for a long time for Mountaineer fans. Um, We were there for the Louisville 2005 undefeated season, or not undefeated season, (laughs) the season where you go 11-1, win the Sugar Bowl, beat Georgia. My brother and I were there. My brother was there for the Sugar Bowl. I was in Mississippi doing relief work for Hurricane Katrina. I always say I wasn't there for the Sugar Bowl, but I was the reason we won the game. God smiled on us because of my (laughs) charity work. Please don't ever forget it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we, we drank the sugar bowl out of beer that 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 for that game but please don't forget this is charity work that's what did it. <laughs> that's what did it put us over the top um and uh, we started our podcast six years ago because we felt like there was a void in the market there just wasn't any voices like ours there weren't people doing what we do uh and we we thought there was something we could offer so we've been doing it since then and we've gotten to do a lot of really cool things since then uh and that's our tie that's our connection to west virginia and uh yeah that's us awesome well and so you kind of mentioned a couple points that they're on uh football the season's right around the corner i feel like it's it's in the air you can smell it it's it's we're, we're right on it we're on the cusp and so i'm excited to have a reason to turn my tv on again i'm excited to have a reason to uh renew my subscriptions again uh the doubters in the Big 12, have definitely made us friends down at the bottom of the polls. Uh, we're, we're, we're very we're very similar in that aspect. So I'm curious, where do you realistically see West Virginia ending up, and where do you see Cincinnati ending up? And if you could, like in a number, give me like a plus one, under one of what your thoughts are there. Oh man, you really put me on the spot here. You want me to? 
<laughs> so I mean, the thing is, here's the thing: it's August, man. You put me. It's August first. <laughs> You put me on the hot seat. I'm not Neil Brown. Don't put me on the hot seat. Like, you want me to say right away exactly where I got these people? I don't know. I'll tell you this much. I know coming, you know, West Virginia started out in the Big 12. Their first season, they started out 5-0, and beat Texas in Texas. We look like we're on top of the world. And then the depth wasn't there. And the Big 12 took its toll on us our first season in this conference. And I will say as newcomers for Cincinnati, for UCF, for BYU, for Houston, depth will play a part. I really do believe that. It's going to take its toll. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be hard. You guys are going to struggle, I think, down the road, especially having a new coaching staff. But I don't really know exactly where I'm going to put you. I can't I can't put a number. I'm not going to give you a plus minus one. But <laughs> I, I'm not putting you in the upper parts of the conference. <laughs> but that said, I'm not a homer either. I'm not putting West Virginia in the upper parts of the conference. Somebody put tonight that they said West Virginia could go nine and three. And I'm thinking, what kind of Kool-Aid are you drinking? <laughs> what cult are you a part of? Because I'm not <laughs> in that cult. I'm not drinking that Kool-Aid. I don't see it, man. I just don't see it. I would love for that to happen. I'm rooting for 12-0 and 0 every single season. I was daydreaming just the other day and tweeted about beating Penn State the first game of the season, but I came back down to earth because I know it's not realistic. I don't see West Virginia finishing in the top 10. I don't see Cincinnati finishing in the top 10. I think it's going to be a rough season for both teams. Hopefully it's better than what I'm predicting. I just can't imagine it. That's fair. That's that's definitely a fair take. I think a lot of Cincinnati fans started off really high. I think there's still a fair amount of them higher up than probably they should be. Uh, my co-host Steve and I have definitely come back down to earth a bit, and we're we've been humbled by the conversations and like looking at kind of where we stack up. But uh, I, I guess I'm I'm curious because I know this is a motto for West Virginia: trust the climb. And I'm curious what what effect does that have for you? Uh, if any, this season, given the circumstances at hand with Neil Brown, he's on the hot seat. Um, he seems to do a lot of good talking and has like a lot of like energy towards his points. And I think he's, he's that guy that can make you feel confident in the team, but doesn't necessarily always back that up. So what are your thoughts on him? Uh, and again, what really is trust the climb? Yeah, that's Neil Brown's model. That's not West Virginia's <laughs> model. Okay. Listen. <laughs> that is that dude if there was a if you could win games from your conversation neil brown would be undefeated nobody nobody wins a press conference like neil brown that guy <laughs> knows what to say when to say it how to say it and who to say it to the guy is just wonderful when he's on the microphone he knows how to get to your heart he speaks to his base like he's a politician i love his words but he just doesn't do what needs done when the game is on the line, he just doesn't. And bottom line is I don't believe in it anymore. You know, I, 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 I'm a last Christian when it comes to Neil Brown. If we're going to talk in those terms, <laughs> I don't believe in it anymore. I did. When he came from Troy, I was sold. After the first season, I thought there was chance for redemption. After he didn't go for it on fourth down and inches against Pitt, I was out. It was over. I was gone. And it crossed it, the line. <laughs> it, was, it was over the line for me. It was over. I don't believe in him anymore. I don't think that he's the guy for the job. He's a nice man. He's a good man. He's a really kind man. He's not the guy for the job in my estimation. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope he proves me wrong. I hope there's egg on my face at the end of the season. But thus far, there's no reason for me to believe that Neil Brown's the guy for the job except for the words that he uses. Trust the climb is a motto that most West Virginians do not believe in anymore. Nobody's trusting any climb anymore. Nobody trusts <laughs> anything that Neil Brown says anymore. Um, there are very few people who are still believing in that, except for people who are being sarcastic right, or, right, or right. being <laughs> disingenuous online. Irrational comes to mind. Shout out to Irrational on Twitter. He's a fun guy. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> We're going to win every game by two touchdowns. I mean, he's got me even saying it. I love it. <laughs> But, but, you know, you can't – you got to take it with a grain of salt. Nobody really believes that motto anymore. And uh, Neil Brown is on a hot seat, and for a good reason. The only thing that keeps him out of the hot seat is the, the financial repercussions because Shane Lyons and, and the Board of Governors signed into a contract that we just really can't afford, to be honest, to get out from under. I don't know that even having a bad season this year gets him fired. So we'll have to wait and see. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is kind of the new era of college football with bigger uh, coaching contracts, longer coaching contracts. You see a similar situation uh, with Jimbo Fisher too. So like, I, I think that this is going to be interesting to see how a lot of these things pan out. I'm curious if he does end up uh, getting canned after the end of this season, if it is poor, uh, if it is good, I feel like there's just going to be enough of an argument to keep him around. Hopefully for West Virginia fans sake, based on the conversation, hopefully there's no extension there, <laughs> but you never know. You never know. Um, you never know. Regardless, uh, speaking specifically on Cincinnati and West Virginia, uh, our familiarities go back a good while through the Big East um, and some priors as well. Um, some would call it a rivalry. Some might not. And some would also probably say that there is no reason for one. We haven't played in over a decade. So what's the point? West Virginia owns the series. It's like 16 to three. And I think there's a tie in there somewhere, too. Uh, and, and the series has was a bit more shared towards its end with the rise of the Brian Kelly teams. And then of course um, the tail off after he left. And so there's trade off big East splits, and then we never see each other again. Um, and so six of those three games, I thought this was interesting. Um, sorry. Six of those nine games uh, since the turn of the millennium, were all within three scores or sorry, one touchdown. I'm getting all over the place. I'm scrambled. Um, and so with those being decided by a touchdown or less, like you could say there's a little bit of jarring going back on uh, some of those games. But with Cincinnati growing over the past, I guess, 11 seasons since we've played uh, back in 2011, would you consider Cincinnati a rival? Are they more of a pseudo rival based on the region? Um, or is Cincinnati just going to be another team in the mix for West Virginia fans? So I, I've spoken out of both sides of my mouth on this issue. Uh, Philip Slavin can tell you because he called me out on it. I <laughs> talked about this on our podcast. My brother and I do this thing called Five on it, uh, where we we go down the you know five questions, we give five answers, and he said it's not a rivalry. I said it was. What I meant was it will be. Yep. It will be geographically, financially, just the proximity. It's going to be a rivalry. Because we're in the same conference now. Mm -hmm. We're so close now. There's no reason why it wouldn't be. Now, of course, I said this prior to Fickle leaving for Wisconsin. But there's no reason, I, I, you know, I'm not a big Satterfield guy, but I, there's no reason to think that, there's no reason to think that Cincinnati's not going to continue to be successful overall. And also, West Virginia has not proven to be the juggernaut that they were when we were playing mm -hmm. 11 years ago. Now, I will, you know, it's not juggernaut like at Alabama's level, but, you know, just <laughs> just not not to the level that they were when they were winning BCS games, right? Right, 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 right. Um, so I believe that they will be. Now, they're, it's going to take a long time before they are on the level of a – they're never going to be a pit to us. I don't think they'll ever be a Virginia Tech to us. But they could be a Maryland to us. They could be a Syracuse where we have a Schwarzwalder trophy that we actually play for with Syracuse. Mm -hmm. They could be on that kind of level for us because of the proximity, because of the nature of conference games. And the fact that we're going to be battling out and Cincinnati is going to be on the same playing field money-wise. Yeah. And that just, I think, eventually you're going to see that, yes, this will be a rivalry for West Virginia. Now, Right now, you're hard, you'll be hard-pressed to find Mountaineers that care about the Bearcats. We just don't. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, and it's not a slight, it's not a slight to, to Cincinnati fans. There's nobody in the Big 12 that anybody in West Virginia says, I hate them, besides Texas. And Texas, everybody hates. Right. We all hate yeah. them. We love doing horns down. Horns down. <laughs> we all it's love so doing easy. it. Yeah, it's so easy. They're so ridiculous. You know, Longhorn Network all the other stuff that is just so easy to, to point out and to, to laugh about. Um, but besides that, there's nobody we look at and we think, man, I hate those guys. I can't wait to beat them. Or we got, you know, we, we circle the, the schedule and say we got to beat them. So that's where we are in Cincinnati for now. That's where they are. But I think in the future it will change. And that's definitely fair too. I think that this has a sort of long game, approach on the rivalry, you know, and I'm curious too, to see how this pans out with the success of the teams too. I think the more back and forth these games go, the more naturally uh, that rivalry will bud. But I think too, like, you know, it, it's, it's sort of like from the start this season, if you look at like Iowa state, 
you look at West Virginia, you look at Cincinnati, you look at some of these teams on the bottom end of things. It's like, all right, who's going to be battling to not be dead last? Yeah. So, hopefully, I think everybody's got hopes that it's not going to be them. Uh, again, the consensus is West Virginia. I personally don't see... I don't see any team really being stuck dead last. I think there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to be in that five to six to seven win range that can take care of their non-conference. And then it's going to be slugging it out. Uh, and, and I think that's the coolest part about the big 12, right? Because we came from the American where for so long, it's like we're dominating every single team we play. If we're not dominating them, we're winning. We're finding a way to win. And I think in this, this range for us, it's going to be a lot different where now we're going to be looking at the perspective of, okay, we might drop a couple of these games. We might drop a handful of these games. We might drop almost all of them. And so it's, I think when you get to that level of like wanting to fight for that, that game every single week, and it's not just kind of like, oh, you know, I can check out the highlights after the game because I know we got this one unlocked because it's USF, uh, which that that wasn't as great this year, but regardless, I, I, I think, you know, a lot less of these games will feel like certainties. And so I think for a game like West Virginia, that props it up to be a lot more uh, intense for us too, as fans. So I'm excited for that. Um, as far as West Virginia goes, and, and I know there's, you know, a couple things working there. There's a couple things that are sort of question marks. Um, one big question mark that I know a lot of West Virginia fans seem to have still, I think the consensus is green's going to be the starting quarterback, but I'm curious as how that's going to go for you guys and what your thoughts are there. I can't see Garrett green, not being the starting quarterback. He's paid his dues. He showed a clear separation between him and Nico Markio in the spring game. Uh, Nico might be the future, but Garrett green is right now. And I can't see, I can't see Garrett green loosening his grip on that starting position between now and, in September 2nd when we play Penn State. So if I had to be a betting man, if I had to, if I had to be Hunter Deckers, <laughs> I would say it's going to be Garrett Green. Okay, and that's fair too, because I, I think a, a big part that I've sort of been looking at with West Virginia is like, what I need to know and what I think our listeners would want to know too is what who are the notables this season? Like, who do we need to have on our scouting list and be like, we got to watch for that guy this year? Well, Garrett Green for sure, because he can beat you with his arm and his legs. But C.J. Donaldson is a man. He was a man last year as a true freshman. He started out as tight end, switched to running back because of necessity, and he showed Pitt immediately that he's a man. You got to watch for that dude. And C.J. Donaldson is legit. So watch out immediately and nonstop for C.J. Donaldson and Garrett Green. That's going to be a one-two punch you're not, you're not going to want to miss. Uh, tight end to running back sounds a lot like a Derrick Henry to me. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a big kid. He's not quite as big as Derrick Henry, but he can move. He's fluid, and he didn't get he didn't even get a full off season of running back reps. So now, it's it's really going to be it's going to be impressive. To me, we're going to see what Chad Scott, who was the running back coach, who's now the offensive coordinator, we're going to see what he was able to do in the off season with a guy like C.J. Donaldson. I'm re I'm really excited to see what C.J. Donaldson does with a full off season as a running back. That's good to know too, because I think this is a big thing for a lot of us going forward is we're going to, we're going to start to learn so much about the big 12. We're going to learn a lot more names that we're not familiar with, you know, and sometimes, you know, with the American, we know like, Oh yeah, that's that fifth year guy. That's that six year guy that we've been playing for forever. An ECU quarterback who I've known for however long. And so I think all that newness is going to be sort of that shock value again. And I think which makes it exciting for a Cincinnati team, you know, I think it makes it fun for all of the other teams that are in the big 12 too. They sort of get that wild card game where they have expectations, but they still don't know exactly what to expect. Um, and, and so speaking of not knowing what to expect, um, we're going to move over to the hardwood here for a minute. Uh, there's a lot of, sort of question marks on my end for West Virginia as far as basketball goes. Of course, Bob Huggins, incredible career. Um, not the most ceremonious end to it. Uh, as Cincinnati fans, uh, you know, we greatly benefited, benefited from uh, Bob Huggins and we respect him a lot. Um, and we all kind of watch that from a distance. A lot of the Bearcats uh, players from back in the 90s also like they had their comments they poured out and you know love for him too i know west virginia fans love him so i'm curious what are your thoughts moving forward without bob huggins and with a you know fairly different look at now at your roster too 
So first, let me say Bob Huggins has been nothing but good to to West Virginia in general and to WVU as a whole. Um, and he's been great to the Raspy Voice kids. We've been able to interact with him multiple times. We interviewed him. I saw him when we, I went when they went to Spain. I was there covering WVU, and he was great to me there. He's given me personal advice, unsolicited, unnecessary. He's just been a great guy to me. And I have nothing but positive things to say about my interaction with Bob Huggins. The things that happened over the last few months have been negative, and there's no other way to spin them. And there's nothing else to say. There's no excuse to be made for the things that, that allegedly occurred. Some of the things are definitive. You know, the radio comments, we heard them with our own ears. That's definitive. The, the allegations, the arrest, we don't know exactly what happened there. That's in dispute at the moment. Those things are negative. Um, but as far as my interaction with Bob Huggins, as far as the university is concerned, Bob Huggins is the legend. I, we have a song. I don't know if you've ever heard it. It's called the yeah. West Virginia Anthem. We've heard that here. We've heard that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we say, I say Bobby Huggins is a legend. It's the fact that it's true. It, that's, that's how we feel about Bob Huggins over here. And uh, that's not to minimize or to act, to act like he's perfect because he's not. But that's how we feel about Bob Huggins. That said, uh, we wish you to go on out differently. You mm -hmm. know, we wish that he could be held up in the light that we, you know, that we all anticipated he would be held up in at the end of his career. Right. Um, Josh Eigler has handled the situation with tremendous grace, tremendous aplomb. He's done a great job holding together the class that he had as far as transfers with Jesse Edwards, Kirk Teresa, Jose Perez, and then bringing in some other guys um, with battle, keeping battle. Uh, mm -hmm. So far, Battle hasn't gotten the waiver, but if he does, that's a big piece that he's gotten. And some other guys that they've been able to pull in, it's really he's really done a great job. And also what he's done as far as bringing in or keeping DeMar Johnson, which, you know, of course. Yes, of course. From Cincinnati. I remember watching that dude. I mean, I watched <laughs> those Cincinnati teams with Bob Huggins. They were fun just nationally. If you like, if you love basketball, you loved watching them. But right. if you had any connection to Bob Huggins, you know, being a West Virginia guy, of course, I love those teams. I love the Jumpman logo on those Cincinnati Bearcat uniforms. So do we. <laughs> I was devastated when Kenyon Martin broke his leg. <laughs> I mean, all of that stuff. That I mean, I was viscerally affected. You know. Anyway, um, but having Slim part of this coaching staff, having uh, Deshaun Butler. Having uh, 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 Ruoff, having Ruoff, and having uh, just all the guys have been able to keep together on this unit. Josh Eiler has done a tremendous job. I'm really proud of him. I'm really happy for him. And I hope he gets to move forward without any more distractions. Yeah. I don't know what this means because I don't know how good the team was going to be before. I right. think they might actually be a little bit better after the defections and after the replacements that Josh Eiler has put together, but you have to wait and see these guys haven't played together. There's no continuity. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to figure out what you're going to do with, with no returning production. Um, so we have to wait and see. Uh, and when you are in a conference like the big 12, which is so tough and so gritty, the questions are going to come down to who's the better coach. And Josh Eiler is going to lose the coin flip, which I saw somebody yeah. say, they're like, when you're doing the coin flip between who's the better coach, who's going to get the benefit of the doubt, Josh Eilers going to lose that battle almost every single time because he's the new guy. He's the new guy. Um, so he's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. And I saw people picking us to finish towards the, the bottom of the Big 12, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I get that. And I don't feel like it is with football, where football is like, this to me is an indictment of Neil Brown right. being picked to finish last in the Big 12. Being picked to finish low in the Big 12 in basketball is more of a, all right, we've got something to prove. Josh Eiler has a chance to prove himself as an interim head coach. This is his first chance. It's time to be a grown man. And he gets <laughs> to go out there and do it. I so, mean, and I'm it, excited. Well, um, and, and hell, to be fair, too, like uh, finishing close to last, finishing towards the bottom of the Big 12 in basketball looking at it from a team coming from the American doesn't really seem to mean much because it still could mean that you're tournament bound. <laughs> and that's one of yeah. those things that we look at is like that opportunity is there. Like you got to put enough, the right, you got to put the right wins together at the right time. They got to mean something and you've got a resume. You might not have to be 
best of the best to get through. And that that's that's something that we're not used to. You got to run the table in the American. You got to run the table in most leagues to get your shot to even to even think about being on the bubble. And, and here I think if you can make the top half, you're in. If you or, can make the worse. bottom half. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I think that it's a gauntlet, man. It's a gauntlet. And it, I mean, you guys, Cincinnati is well equipped to be in this league. So they're ready basketball wise for sure. They're ready for this and it's going to be fun. Yeah. I mean, and looking at it from our perspective too, like in a similar way, like we have no idea how these guys are going to gel. You know, the chemistry isn't necessarily all there. We've got a lot of new faces. We have a lot of younger guys. We have a good amount of roster turnover after last year. So it's going to be an interesting mix to see how it all plays together. But again, I think it's just that excitement of the unknown because we don't really know where we're at in comparison to the big 12. We know we're not exactly up to speed, but we know that if we can get our legs under us, a lot could happen really fast. And so that's sort of one of those things where, you know, it's, it's just all going to be excitement for us. Um, And so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of excitement around the big 12. Uh, and there's also a lot of excitement around the rest of the country too. Um, I'm curious because we're in the mix of the big 12 realignment is the hottest topic of probably 2023 in total. If you follow any amount of sports, it doesn't matter what sport you follow. You've heard about realignment and Brandon actually put out a great tweet today that a lot of us Cincinnati fans can relate to. And so I'll read it here. I don't feel sorry for nobody in this realignment mess. Nobody felt sorry for little old West Virginia. Never have, never will. And that, that is exactly, I think, how Cincinnati fans feel. That's exactly how a lot of some of the other schools might feel as well. So I'm curious from your perspective, um, you know, how do you look at realignment? And as well, like we were talking that 14th spot, you know, Colorado's in. It sounds like maybe Arizona will be in too. We don't know yet, but. Who's your who's who's at the top of your list there? So you know my list, and I'm sure your list is the same. Like real talk, what I want is to be safe, and that's what we are, man. We're safe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best feeling in the world. It safe. really is. <laughs> First and foremost, we're safe, but then after that, if I've got to be greedy. I want to expand east. Let's get a base out east. And I don't want G5. I want to steal what we can from Power 5 conferences. Now, the grant of rights in the ACC seems ironclad. There are people who keep talking about Florida State and Clemson. If somehow they can figure out a way to get out of that, then the floodgates will will just be released. And then we can start talking about the Virginia Techs and the pits of the world. And I would love to bring them into the Big 12 because we get those regional rivalries back for West Virginia. That would be you know, strengthened for this for the Cincinnati's. That's much better than UConn or Memphis, in my estimation. Um, but, you know, we have to wait and see on that. Right. I don't know how realistic any of that is because I don't believe Florida State and Clemson are going anywhere. I certainly don't think Florida State and Clemson are going to the Big Ten. I don't believe that for, a, for even a moment. I don't believe that. Florida State and, and Clemson are not AAU. The Big Ten is not interested in anybody who's not AAU, not named Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Okay. So anybody who thinks that needs to get that out of their mind. Stop it. Okay? For God's sake, stop it. One. Two, I just don't see them getting out of that grant of rights. Mm-mm. I, I, and I people agree. People talk about ways to get out of it. It seems ironclad. Like, when Maryland left for the Big Ten, the ACC said never again. Yeah. And they went and they did their due diligence and they, they locked it down. They locked it down. They made it iron. And it's tight and good for them, man. They're, they're locked into that contract and it pays them peanuts. And I think it's hilarious. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you didn't want West Virginia? You didn't want Cincinnati? Forget you. Forget yeah. you. Forget all your schools. I hope you drown. I wash my hands <laughs> with you. Move on. We're moving up. You know, it's like Drake said, how about now? Because I'm up right now. <laughs> yeah. And you're stuck right now. That is a yeah, that is so, a great you know, comparison. <laughs> that's how I feel, man. That's exactly how I feel. So, uh, but if we're if we're talking about what's you know if we get Arizona, great, you know whatever. Because and people are like, what does Colorado do for the Big Twelve? Colorado was not has not been very good at football. They're not very good at basketball. What it does is you add another Power Five team. Yeah. What it does is it destabilizes a a competitor. 
Mm-hmm. What it does is it delegitimizes a competitor. It gives legitimacy to our conference. It does everything that you want it to do. No, it's not UCLA or USC, but it does give you something that the Pac-9 doesn't have anymore. <laughs> Looking at Pac-8, too, there's a discount deal going on. Anybody who wants That's to right. bring them up if you want to pay them. I mean, and it, this is such an interesting time, too, because you look at the situation of, like, Oregon and Washington. It's like, do they go to the Big Ten? Do they go get absorbed in the Mountain West? Do they go to the Big 12? Do they stay in the pack? Like, it, it, there's so many revolving conversations because there's so many options for teams like that. And I think when you look at, like, uh, of course, all of our, if any of you follow any of the amount of noise of BYU fans and Utah fans, it's really funny. <laughs> but it's so funny to see the BYU fans. It's like, I mean, this, and this, I think BYU is probably feels the closest to how we would feel in Cincinnati and West Virginia. It's like for so many years, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally we got that break. And right when you get that break, all the walls around the castle start to crumble and you're safe inside. I mean, and it, whether you do good or not, you've just made it, you, you figured it out and you, you can ride the tide and you'll get your moment eventually, but you get to sit, just sit in, feel confident for a little while and not worry. And I mean, I, hell, I like, I look at the way this whole situation's panned out. Of course, Texas and Oklahoma really were, you know, basically the Kickstarter to all of this. And of course, you know, all these other decisions follow suit. I am really curious too, if the ACC were to f- happen to dilute, but I, I, like I like you said too, I don't see that happening. I think they're lock stocked and ready to go. I think the pack kind of, you know, it, it's, if Arizona leaves, that is the kill shot. That is a done deal. I don't see how they survive past that. Um, and, you know, I'm never going to root for the downfall of a conference with so much tradition, but don't turn your nose up to the rest of the conferences. Don't think you're all high and mighty because you'll get the rug swept out from right under you. Uh, that's a lot on realignment. Uh, you did mention the Louisville pit. Virginia tech ish area. And I, I did want to cover that too, but we kind of touched on that already. So I'm going to wrap us out with a few last questions. Um, this is a big one because we have to ask everybody who comes on. Have you been to Cincinnati? A B have you tried skyline and C what are your thoughts on that? If the answer to B is yes. So I'm, I live in Ohio right now. Okay. Well, all right. We're cooking right now. All right. <laughs> so I, I've had Skyline since I've had Skyline for, I, I, I don't remember. I've had, I've eaten Skyline for years and I love Skyline. <laughs> all right. It's fantastic. All right. All right. It's so then what's the Skyline order? Skyline is fantastic. <laughs> I've been to Cincinnati. I've had Ryan guys. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all about Cincinnati. It's a cool city and uh, I love Kings Island. <laughs> all of it. And like Cincinnati is a great place. Awesome. Well, okay, so if you know all that, all right, so now I'm going to hit you with two. So we do have the Cincy, uh, the Cincy Reigns sponsored beer, yeah. Cincy Light, which is going to be coming out. So I'm hoping that you'll be a fan and try that. I've heard that there are – I don't know if it's in the works or if it's out or what the deal is. I think West Virginia is working on one too if it's not already Trust out. Logger. Trust, Trust Logger. Trust Logger Big Timber Brewing. Are we trusting the climb that that's going to be? No, 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 no. It's named for the Country Roads Trust, which is our NIL trust. So please do not get it confused. It is Trust Logger for Country Roads Trust. Has nothing to do with Neil Brown, guys. No, it's Trust Logger. It has nothing to do with trusting the climb. Noted. Okay. All right. So we got that. So then what's the go-to beer at Ryan Geist then? And then what would be? the go-to skyline order uh so wait so tell me you can tell you maybe you can tell me i don't i know that normally the beer i, I can't remember the name of it it comes in a, a green can with the blue oh uh truth truth yep truth ipa okay truth all right and then so what's the skyline order uh i usually just get chili with the with the, the spaghetti like i just i don't get three-way three-way yeah. or four-way you got the beans you got the onion yeah, all of it. Beans, onions, yeah. All right. See, that's the way to go. You got to get the five way. Uh, that, I, that's... Six, do they have six way? <laughs> if they've got a six way, I haven't had it. Or there's probably Wait, what, what, whatever it is. I do the, I do the whole thing. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah, five ways the shebang. Five ways the shebang. That's okay, the full five thing. Way, then. I'm in. I'm all okay. in. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Well, that wraps up pretty much everything I had there. The last question that I have for you today, again, thank you so much for joining us, is. 
Final game score prediction. Cincinnati travels out to West Virginia. How's that game going to go? Man, I'm so bad at scores. I'm bad at scores <laughs> in season, let alone you're asking <laughs> August 1st. If I, if I had to go with a score, like I think West Virginia – so one of the things that's interesting is that West Virginia has been doing this – they've been doing the, the, the um, read option – with guys like JT Daniels and Jared Davey for the last five years, <laughs> these statue quarterbacks, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, what are you doing? We all know that he's handing the ball off. Right. He's not reading anything. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> so now we've got a quarterback who can actually read the end and there might be some kind of, you know, option. Um, so I think the offense is going to be a lot better. So I think there might be some, some action there. Um, I don't know a whole lot about Cincinnati, to be honest. Let me say 33-23 Cincinnati. Ooh, that will be a first. I'm sure that will probably be the only time. So West Virginia is stop number two on the truck stop trail. And I'm probably going to call it in the air now. That is the only time that I will ever hear anybody say that Cincinnati will win. So kudos to you for your honesty. We appreciate it here. We'll see what happens. I, uh, listen, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm yeah. wrong. I mean, I don't hope you're wrong, but I <laughs> we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting to find out regardless. I think Cincinnati, West Virginia have a lot of question marks this year. There's going to be a lot to find out. Again, a lot of excitement, but football season's right around the corner. We're getting right to it. So, again, keep on the trail. Uh, we're going to make a few more stops here before the season gets started. We're going to continue as it goes. But, Brandon, Raspy Voice Kids, thank you so, so much for joining us. It's a lot of fun to have you on. As, as always, great conversation. So appreciate having you on, man. And uh, anything else you got for us before we head out? You can check my brother out at J-N Theme, P-H-E-E-N, at all, at, uh, on Twitter, and The Raspiest. Or, is it X now? I'm not, I can't do the arms. That's, that's a Xavier thing. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> don't, don't do Xavier. <laughs> don't do Xavier. No, it's J-N Theme at, on, on X, whatever. <laughs> And he's the raspiest on Instagram. I am. I also hate Pitt on everything. And we are the raspy voice kids on everything. So you can find us anywhere that you do social media. Find us. We uh, we actually are going to be. When is this coming out? This will be coming out uh, Wednesday morning. August okay, 2nd. Awesome. Awesome. So tomorrow, Wednesday, August 2nd, we are going to be do some, doing something special with Country Roads Trust. So check us out live on Twitter. Tomorrow evening with Country Rose Trust, the Raspy Voice Kids. Holla at your boys. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for coming on, man. Just appreciate talking to you. And uh, take care, and we'll see how this whole thing goes this season. All right, Justin. All right, take care, man.